So this is an electronic wind instrument. Essentially what it does is it takes some inputs, so it takes in pressure from where you blow in the end, and it senses where your fingers are, and it turns these into MIDI signals using an Arduino as a brain, and it sends those MIDI signals down a USB cable into your computer, where you can then use a software synthesizer to produce some sound. So this device is based on uh, the EWI by Akai. EWI stands for Electronic Wind Instrument. It's essentially a controller that allows instruments to produce music um, as if they were playing a wind instrument. This is a ground pad which is used as a voltage reference for the other pads which use capacitive sensing. The ground pad is essential to make the sensing quality better. Unfortunately on this version, as I'll explain later, the hardware doesn't work perfectly and I needed to adapt the finger pattern in order to compensate for that. So on the back we have the octave selectors. So you essentially you put your thumb on one of these um, and you can select an octave and then the front ones are used to actually select your note. Originally I had planned to use the same finger pattern as the Akai Iwi, but unfortunately that didn't work out, so instead I'm using a kind of chromatic scale. So I'm going to show you what's inside here now. Um, essentially it's got these lovely little uh, M3 machine screws. This is all 3D printed by the way. Uh, I'll show you the CAD models later so you can see a little bit closer what we're looking at. These are just the back cover, and inside there is a whole bunch of electronic spaghetti. So what you're looking at is an Arduino Mega, which is the brain of the whole operation, pressure sensor, and underneath this kind of uh, strange looking clamp is a little boost converter. This is an MT3608. Basically what it does is it takes the 5 volt which comes in through the USB cable, and it boosts it up to around 8 volts I'm using and then it passes that 8 volts into the voltage input for the Arduino. This 8 volts is needed just to allow the Arduino a little bit of headroom so that it's able to output 5 volts in order to power the pressure sensor. The USB cable has had the power lines spliced out into the boost converter and the data pins still go into the Arduino. This little bit which I've actually just noticed is broken is mounting these two circuit boards which contain the resistors needed for the CapSense library to work. The way the capacitive sensing library works, to my understanding, is essentially you have a transmit pin and a receive pin. The transmit pin sends a voltage signal, which goes from low to high, and it sends out through a large resistor and then back into a re receive pin, and essentially what it's doing is it's measuring the time delay between these two pins. On these graphs you can kind of see what happens here, so without a capacitor attached, the transmit pin sends a signal, it comes out, and it goes back into the receive signal, and the time that they're received is essentially the same. But what happens is when you touch one of the pads on the front of the device, what you're essentially doing is you're adding another connection here, which is a capacitor to ground. So what happens here is it basically it means that this capacitor takes some time to charge up. So instead of the signal instantly going from transmit to receive, it takes a little while for the, the voltage on the capacitor to rise up. And essentially what you get is the transmit goes low to high, digital as usual, but the receive pin, it has this exponential um, increase. What the CapSense library does is it measures this delay, and based on how big it is, it tells whether you're touching the, the pad or not. So in practice what you have on this device is a whole bunch of these resistor pairs. I've just omitted the receive uh, resistor just for simplicity to make it a bit clearer. And what happens is I've connected all the transmit pins to one pin on the Arduino. So Arduino sends a transmit signal and then the Arduino measures how long it takes for the signal to get to each of the receive pins. By looking at the time delays it can work out which pins you're touching. The major downfall of this design is that when you touch more than one pad, your body's capacitance is shared across all of them, which reduces the time delays. This is the reason I needed to adapt the fingering pattern to one where a maximum of only four pads is touched at one time. This is, of course, different to any actual non-electronic instrument, or even the Akai Iwi. I'm now going to grace you with a little rendition of the Star Wars theme, played by yours truly. The sound is being produced by a free software synthesizer called Sunvox, made by Alexander Zolotov. 
I'll link it for you in the description if you'd like to check it out. I apologise in advance for this sounding like a drunken orchestra rehearsal. As you can probably tell, I'm more of an engineer than I am a musician. This was attempt number six or something like that. The sound is being recorded internally on my laptop, which is why you can't hear me blowing into the tube. If you'd like to stick around, I'm about to rattle through the CAD models now. If not, please take the time to leave a like and a subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next video which will feature another instrument I'm working on. It's a three valve device based on the electronic valve instrument designed by Niall Steiner and Johan Berglund. If everything goes to plan, it should be a lot more playable than this hunk of junk. So uh, here you can see my lovely CAD model. Uh, basically what we have is, this is the main kind of like front part of the case. Uh, it holds the Arduino, which you can see it just kind of like fits in there quite snugly. Uh, so and then back here we have the like the main kind of back of the case. Uh, it's got some mounting points, and you might notice that there's a little kind of lip around the edge. So this basically allows it to interlock with the front, so you don't get the uh, you don't get it slipping around when it's uh, all attached together. The back half looks like this. So what you're looking at here. These are just little uh, reinforcement ribs to stop it from bending, and then you can see there's the little interlocking shelf again. Uh, this little pad here is where the pressure sensor mounts, so I'm using an MPX, or sorry, MXP5010DP. Uh, interestingly, these are actually designed for use in washing machines. Uh, here you can see the, the data sheet. Um, yeah, they're for measuring the, the water level in a washing machine. Got some nice counterboard screw holes, and uh, yeah, this little little tab here, uh, that's basically what holds the back of the, the case on. Um, if you can see this, it basically it clamps the, the, the long section of the back onto the front section um, to just stop it popping out. These little screw holes here are what mounts the, um, the, main, the main section on. By some bizarre alignment of the planets, this little USB strain clamp whatever stops the, um, well it's meant to stop the, the USB cable being yanked out at the end pulling out all the guts of the thing turns out to be the only problem in this design where it actually conflicts with this bolt hole here in practice there's a little nut that goes over the bolt that comes through that hole, it's just for one of the finger pads um, and USB strain clamp doesn't fit you can see some little uh, reinforcement ribs here, these are just to make it a little bit sturdier and then you can see the, the um, a little interlocking groove. I just left a little bit of clearance so that it fits nicely. Yeah, overall, that's the, the whole design. If you found this interesting, please do drop a like and subscribe for more. I'm the Extra Large Engineer, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank mm -hmm. you.